Hi there, my name is Aaron Lancherman. I'm a professor of electrical engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is my quarantine hair. So I've created a Unity package that contains some example shader code that we'll look at in this and a few of the following lectures. So the way I've structured some of these demos in this Unity package and the other Unity packages that I'll provide later in the class have been heavily influenced by this website, Catlight Coding, that has a truly amazing set of tutorials. I strongly recommend that you go check out Catlight Coding, uh, particularly these tutorials on rendering and these tutorials on advanced rendering. There's also some great tutorials on scriptable render pipelines that we'll look at a little bit later. And one issue with the scriptable render pipelines is that Unity has changed the way those work quite a bit. So you want to make sure you're looking at the latest tutorials. So Catlight Coding, great website, great tutorials, go check them out. The pedigree of the example code I'm going to show you goes a long way back to Unity 4 before there was the standard physically based Unity shader that they introduced in Unity 5. In Unity 4, they had a bunch of small individual shaders that you could select. And a good portion of what I did in my demo code was try to reproduce those shaders. And that was also done under the advice and influence of various things in the CG tutorial, which fortunately is now available for free on NVIDIA's website. So this intro shader Unity package I developed uses these sword and shield models that were available for free from the Unity Asset Store. And so I just wanted to give a shout out to the creator of these models. Okay, here you go from Tula, Russia. They've got a lot of cool stuff here. So you should go check them out. So I currently have two Unities installed. One is the 2019.4 long-term support release. So the idea there is Unity is going to keep providing bug fixes for a while and keep supporting it, but not add new features. Of course, 2020.1 beta, that is supposed to be the latest, greatest everything, but probably not the most stable. Hopefully this will have its full official release in a couple of weeks. I saw somebody from Unity say something like that on Twitter. Anyway, the intro shaders package I created appears to load fine in both of these versions. So to show how to load this in, I'm going to create a new Unity project. As I said, it seems to load up and run fine in both versions. I'm going to go ahead and use the original 2019.4 version here. Let's call this intro shader load test. And here, let's not use 3D with extras. It loads in a bunch of extras. And we're also not going to be using HDRP or the universal render pipeline. These are new fancy scriptable pipeline things, and the intro shaders I've created won't work with those. So let's just go with a standard old school built-in original non-fancy pipeline 3D project. So we'll create one of these. The main thing you need to do every time you create a 3D scene is you go into the project settings and then you click on player. And then you change this from gamma because running in gamma color space is not good. Change this to linear and periodically go back and make sure nothing's somehow magically set this back to gamma. Always make sure this is in linear. Rant concluded. Okay, so over here I have my Unity package file. I'm just gonna take that and drag it onto the assets folder. And it's gonna tell me about all the stuff that's in there. Yep, there's a lot of stuff in there. And then I'm going to hit import. This also works on the 2020.1 version of Unity. And now in the scene folder, there will be five scenes. One of them is the scene we're looking at now, the sample scene. That's not very interesting. That was created automatically when we created that blank Unity project. But we also have a set of simple shaders that we're looking at. And so we'll spend a lecture talking about those. I'll leave the spin here for a second so that you may admire them. Here's the unlit textures demo. So that will be the second lecture in the series where we dig into the code and talk about how to do textures. You know, actually, this will be more impressive if I put it in the mode of maximizing on play. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so that's still not terribly impressive. But later we'll look at another scene where we actually include some lighting. 
So here, in addition to having these swords and shields spin, I put down some cylinders, and then I have a light going back and forth. And when we look at this in the third lecture we do, where we delve into these examples in detail, we'll talk about the difference between per-vertex and per-pixel lighting, aka grow versus Vong style shading. And then the final example we'll look at in the sequence, it will involve doing the same demos, but doing them using normal maps to get the roughness effect that you're seeing here. Now, normal mapping, of course, is something that can only work if you're doing per-pixel lighting. So if you haven't used Unity before, this is the scene view, not to be confused with the game view, which you actually see when running the game. This lets you move objects around. Here's the light, here's the camera. I should mention that all of the shader code that I'm providing here, I'm only guaranteed to work if you have a single light source in the scene. If you have more light sources in the scene, they might work okay with multiple lights. They may not. It depends on some particulars.